Hello, welcome back to the channel. And this is a channel where we give you reviews, playthroughs, unboxings. I generally like to talk a lot of bollocks. Tabletop gaming in general. And in this video, we're going to be talking about a pickup and deliver game designed by Alexander Fister. We're going to be talking about broom service. And in this game, you will be flying around a map trying to deliver potions to different regions. It will give you points that will hopefully allow you to win the game. So in this video, we're going to be giving you a very brief overview of the rules. We'll be telling you what we do like we don't like and we'll come back with say whether or not broom service is still worth your time and bother today and in the future so remember if you knew it then please consider subscribing to this channel eh? hit the like button and all that youtube bullshit see you after this bollocks so broom service how to play this game so Broom Service is a pick up and deliver game designed by Alexander Fister. To set up, each player is going to get a set of identical roll cards. You're going to get one potion of each colour, green, purple and red. And depending on where you are in the turn order, you'll get one or two wands, right? So the game consists of seven rounds with a variable amount of turns in each round. At the beginning of each round, each player is going to simultaneously choose four of their ten roll cards and this will become their hand. Start and player for each round will choose one of their roll cards and they'll put it face up on the table and you'll see that each of these cards has a strong action and a weak action you'll start by announcing which of the actions you will play if you play the weak or cowardly action then you get to take the action that's on the card if you announce the strong action player to your left will then announce whether they have the same card in their hand and if they do you don't get to take the action but they do they will do the same thing they'll announce whether they want to take the cowardly or the brave action if they take the cowardly action they'll be able to resolve the card if they choose the brave action then the next player on their left will see whether they got that card if they have then they do the same thing if they haven't it goes to the next player and so on and so forth right dependent on the player count some of these cards will be set off to the side and this means that if you play these cards there'll be a victory point penalty if you decide to play them so you can play them but you're gonna lose points of doing it so if you play a witch card these will generally allow you to move your witches around the board and then deliver a potion to one of the towers you see there's two different types of towers if you deliver to a square top tower then you'll stick the potion in the general supply this is like an infinite sort of thing but like a magic porridge pot on it where it just keeps on allowing you to deliver stuff you go to a round tower then you'll put your potion on top of that tower to say that it's been used right and nobody else can go there so druids will allow you to deliver potions to towers to get an extra free victory points right depending on what action you take so this is a nice way of getting some extra points if you can play the brave action with them so you also see there's clouds on the board can't move on to cloud tiles unless you dispel the clouds right the way you do this is you play the weather fairy card and this will allow you to spend wands to magic away the clouds i wish i had a fucking one so i could magic away this permanent cloud above my fucking head if you manage to do this then you will keep the cloud and you'll get free victory points don't get free victory points for you do I, you fuck so also at the beginning of the round you'll reveal one of the 10 event cards yeah these will enact some sort of special ability during the game you might play the black market and black distillery cards this way a player could decide whether to take the action or event each time the player plays a cowardly role yeah or you might end up playing the works no it's not that shitty album by fucking queen is it it means that each player can only deliver a maximum of one set of resources this round so yeah these event cards sort of mix the game up there add a nice little bit of unknown shit to the game yeah so there's also a few variants in the game can't be fucked to talk about them because we usually only play the basic game of this but yeah after seven rounds player with the most victory points will be the winner of broom service so do we like but broom service so the first thing that we oh, shit bag. so the first thing that we like about broom service is that it has a nice little tiny little bit of take that in this game right if things go according to plan you can scupper your opponent's turns by playing the same card that they have there's a couple of problems with this which i'll talk about in a bit the central mechanism of pushing your luck just that little tiny bit by playing the brave action hoping that somebody else hasn't played it can be a little bit exciting especially not if you're on the receiving end but especially if you're the one who manages to take the action and nobody else has played the same card right sort of borrows a little bit from another of Fister's designs called Port Royal where you'll be drawing cards until you get a certain number of ships but it sort of twists it on its head somewhat yeah so I think a part of this is that it's a familiar thing and it just adds a little bit of tension to each turn right so the second thing that we like about Broom Service is related to the first point right is that the main mechanic adds a nice little bit of deduction fused with a little bit of luck right it is possible to sort of card count 
know what cards people have already played, especially if you're going to go last in the round, you're going to be able to see exactly what all of the other players have played. So being able to maybe semi-deduce what people are doing adds a little bit of skill, doesn't it? But you've got the luck of doing this after you've chosen your cards, you know? It's a final thing a lot about broom service is it looks fucking charming, doesn't it? It reminds us a little bit of the board of Small World. Maybe it was drawn by the same person. The colours are really, really nice. The artwork on the cards is really, really super. We couldn't find the English version when we got this, so we had to pick up the German version and I found some card scans on a Russian print and play board game website. Translated the English and all that shit. So that's why our cards look a little bit shit. I mean, the pieces are a little bit of a disappointment, you know. I could have done with maybe some better witches rather than those stupid things that look like they've come out of a 70s MB Games coffin box. But the overall aesthetic is actually quite nice and pleasing to my eye, right? Not my third eye, these eyes. But don't we like that broom service? So the first thing that we don't like about this game is it feels a little bit abstract to us. It's a bit weird that you've got bags of personality in the cards. You know, all the little cartoony characters are really, really nice. And then when you look at the board, you've got those stupid wooden witch things that I think we've seen in the Enchanted Forest or something, a Ravensburger game from years ago. So it doesn't really feel as much going on on the board, you know. Maybe it could have done with a more expensive production, but then I suppose these Ravensburger games pride themselves, or at least they used to pride themselves, on being reasonably cheap and accessible, you know. If you think about Castles of Burgundy in the same sort of vein, I mean, we picked that up for 15 quid way back in the day, and now they're selling a deluxe version for fucking 200 quid. So yeah, maybe Broom Service will get a revamp. Maybe it'll get a deluxified version that people will spunk 300 quid Kickstarter on, right? But yeah, I feel a little bit lonely playing this. I don't know, maybe I'll bring my teddy bear next time, you know. So the second thing that we don't like about Broom Service, and this is the main thing that we don't like about it, is that sometimes on your turn, you can't do fuck all because you're just unlucky enough to choose the cards everybody else has. Where you are choosing your cards blind, you can't really make an informed decision as to which cards you should choose. And you need to play those brave cards in order to win the game, right? If you keep playing those cowardly cards, it's going to take you longer to get where you want to go. So you're going to have to make a decision as to when you want to play these tough as fuck cards, right? The only problem being is that you don't know what other people have chosen. There's no hints on offer unless you do this towards the end of the round where a lot of cards have come out, but it's still going to be pissing in the wind. And we've played games of this where some people haven't been able to take an action for fucking ages and they end up getting frustrated and punch a hole in my plasterboard wall. So the final thing that we don't like about Broom Service is that the removal of some cards to the side with a three point penalty based on player count seems a little bit sloppy and a little bit lazy. It's almost as if they designed a game and then came back and went, hang on a minute, there's too many cards in play for lower player counts. What can we do about it? I know, let's just take some cards out the fucking deck. And those cards might be the cards that you really, really needed to play this round, right? Not only might you get neutered by other players taking the action your turns are also nerfed by the fact that the game tells you to remove cards, right? My advice is don't play this with less than five players. That really gets under my nutsack. So to summarise, is Broom Service still worth your time and bother eight years after it was first released in 2015? I think it's 2015. Yeah, 2015. So we're going to say maybe, maybe not. Broom Service is an interesting yet flawed pick up and deliver game that is fun but suffers from a sense of plodding and unfair turns, right? You need to be bold to win, but in doing so, you may not be able to do anything on your turn. And this is a fucking crime. That said, this is still an okay game if you don't get wrapped up in the uneven nature of its central mechanism. I'm just not convinced Broom Service is as good as all of the awards it's received would have you believe. So there you go, that is Broom Service. Remember, if you're new here, then please consider subscribing to this channel. Hit the like button and all that YouTube bullshit. We'll see you next time.